Marty. <laughs> I, was, I was born in Brooklyn, moved to Flatbush, went to Midwood High School, went to the Yeshiva of Flatbush, graduated from um, Midwood High School, and uh, went to University of Miami. 18, I went to, uh, to sign in, and uh, they took a hearing test. I failed it, so I went to another uh, place where they were taking in new recruits, and I, uh, I, I faked it and I passed the test, so I got in the Army for the Second World War and um, went to basic training, Jacksonville, Florida. At the time, the war was uh, in, in Europe, and three months later, after my basic training in uh, Jacksonville, I trained with the 105 howitzer and became pretty efficient uh, with the uh, cannon. And when I, when I left, and by mistake, I came back a day earlier, and I was put in a different branch. I never saw the people that I trained with. So when I went to, um, I, to Europe, I got there, they gave me a completely different job. I never saw a 105 again. And um, that was my beginning in, in Europe. I remember collecting guns, because the, the GIs that were there, they were leaving. And I bought uh, a bunch of pistols. And when the new, new recruits came in, I was selling them. That was my uh, job on the side. Uh, but while I was there, some captain, uh, I met some captain, and he he wanted me to become his driver. And I, I said, that'd be great. But while I was there, he told me he had a bunch of pistols, and he showed me the box. He had a whole trunk full of pistols. When I was there, I never really had experience with any, any guns or anything. So I pulled out one of the guns and uh, pulled the trigger and shot, shot through the ceiling. And um, I didn't realize there were bullets in it. And he was very upset, and uh, he never gave me the job. And the war was kind of nearly over. Uh, so after 18 months, I, was, uh, I left the Army and went back to Miami, where I was at school originally. When I was down in Miami, uh, we used to go to the highlight games at night, and I really enjoyed the game, and I, I, I really liked it so much that I, I used to go in the afternoon and practice uh, with some of the players, uh, because I really, really was hung up on the game. Anyway, after a while, I became reasonably good, and after I uh, graduated uh, from, um, from Miami, I went to uh, Spain and, and, and for a year and played the game there uh, to become more proficient at it. And when I came back to Florida, I got a job as a professional highlight player and did that for about a year. After that, I got tired of it. I got a job in New York with my dad. As while, while, I was at, while I was working with my father, I opened up a furniture shop called Brancusi on 1st Avenue and 55th Street. It was very successful making marble tables with a partner of mine. After about a year or so, I went to, uh, to California to open up a store there. And I did on La Cienega Boulevard called uh, Brancusi. And after that, went to San Francisco, opened up a store and then went to Texas and opened up a store and went to Florida and to Miami and opened up a store. During the time I was in New York, uh, I met a girlfriend and during a party there, uh, I met a, a Marlon Brando and during the party I showed him a car trick and he wanted to know how to do it. I wouldn't tell him, he was very upset. Later on, when I went back to Los Angeles, I uh, met him several more times uh, through a, a friend of mine, uh, Elliot Kasner, who was a producer. I produced a lot of Brando's pictures. In uh, Los Angeles, I rented a house up in the Hollywood Hills. A, a friend of mine from uh, New York uh, told me that uh, one of her friends was coming out there, to, that he, got, he had gotten a job at MGM and he was looking for a place to stay. And I su suggested that he stay with me in, uh, in the hills. Oh, when he came out, I'm, that was the first time I met him, it was a guy by the name of Leslie Nielsen. And we lived in the house for several years uh, while he was um, 
while I was working in the, in the store, and he was uh, over at MGM making a movie, movie pictures. Back in New York, uh, we, we had a, um, a, a, a product that could be sold to uh, hotels, and we went to a hotel show where I hired a, a girl to be reception there. And the girl, the girl was the um, first time I had met her, and she did a great job. Her name was uh, June, and I eventually married her. Uh, well, the show was for about a week, and after that, uh, we said goodbye, and I paid a lot of money for the show, and I was a little upset, but whatever she asked for, she got. Later on, while I was visiting one of my uh, uh, my customers, he mentioned he mentioned her, and uh, I said, "What about her?" And he said that he had a a guy that he was going to introduce her to, because he, this fellow liked uh, the way she was was at the show. So when I heard that, it piqued my interest a little bit, and I gave her a call and asked her if she wanted to go out. She said she was busy, and. Um, I said, okay, I forgot what happened exactly, but I called her a few, a few more times after that. And we went out and we had a good time. And um, we were very friendly for a long time. And then I went to, um, I was going to Florida to visit the, visit the store and I asked her if she wanted to go along. And she said, uh, great. So we went to Florida together. Uh, while we were down in Florida, we visited uh, the west coast of uh, Florida, and my mother was there, and I, in I introduced uh, uh, June to my mother, and they kind of got, uh, got along very well. And we went, to, uh, went, went back to New York, and I had an apartment on First Avenue and 59th Street. My, my partner at the store owned the building, and I had a good deal on a one-bedroom apartment where uh, I lived with uh, June. Of the, I lived with June for a while, and I went back and forth to uh, to California to take care of my business. And um, I'm not sure about the timing, but I know that uh, while we were li living together, uh, I was still dating my girlfriends, and she, she, she was dating her boyfriends, which didn't really, didn't really bother me, because I knew that she was living with me. <laughs> uh, but during that particular time, uh, after a while, I decided that I was going to uh, marry her. So I, I bought a ring, had it in my pocket, and one night when we were in the apartment, she was talking to her boyfriend at the particular time, and uh, I, don't know, I don't know exactly what happened. Something came up on the telephone, and I really don't remember <laughs> what happened, except that uh, I had the ring in my pocket, and while she was talking, I threw, her, I threw the box at her, and she looked at it, and she, she was talking to the guy on the phone, and she said, I think I'm uh, getting engaged. <laughs> and finally, we got married, and we drove down to, uh, we went to our honeymoon in, in the Bahamas. It was the day after that June and I went out on a, boat, a glass bottom boat as a trip. I didn't want to go, she, she wanted to go. She, she didn't want to go, but I really made her go. When we finally got out in the ocean, the water was so rough that I got really, really sick and had to jump in the water to see if I could uh, get rid of my sickness. But, I was really, really sick. Got back on the boat. Another boat came out to take us because uh, some people on the boat were sick. But I was the first boat. I was the first person to jump onto the onto this other boat before everybody else. And we we went back to shore and um, where everybody was all was out sunning themselves. We looked like we were shipwrecked, and we went back to the hotel. And I really wanted some chicken soup, but I couldn't get any chicken soup. But I did the best I could. And I remember that I, the next day, I, 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 I got off the bed to do some exercises. And I hurt my back, I looked like a monkey. And while we were out by the pool, a friend of mine who, was, who came back from Cuba because the boat turned around, visited us, and um, 
uh, because uh, he knew the, he knew where I was. Anyway, I look about, looked like a monkey, and I, and I was very upset. I come on a honeymoon. Uh, we uh, stayed in Florida because I had the store there, and we didn't go back to New York, where we still had the coffee on the table, and we didn't we had we didn't go back there for about two years because uh, after we were, after we were, after we were in uh, in uh, Florida, we went directly to uh, California. Never went back to New York and got an apartment there and lived there for uh, all the. T we lived there permanently. We went back to New York a couple of times, but we uh, went back to Florida and we went back to California, where we decided we were going to stay. June always wanted to go back to New York, but we never quite made it permanently. Did anything happen in Florida while you were living there? Like what? Like I was born? <laughs> while we were in Florida, the first year, I had my first child, Michelle, and, um, and, uh, and of course, we took her to, to California. We had no choice. <laughs> we went back to... Uh, California lived there, had another child, Tony, my son. <laughs> this is in the flat, and uh, California was very good. And we opened up a, um, uh, we were selling retail. We finally opened up a, another store, and the back of the store we started uh, selling wholesale. And we named the company uh, Corsican Furniture. June picked out the name, it was her choice. Uh, we had a factory uh, near our house, found the house on Kings Road. Bought the house, lived in it for about five years more, and then we bought another house on Hudson Avenue where we still live. Oh, we, we went shopping. I think we, I forgot what day it was, but anyway, we bought a lot of stuff. And then the, ne the next day, I said to June, I said, "Let's go back." Oh, June found a mistake. She always uh, she always looked at the receipts. Uh, when she bought, bought something, like she, she might buy a hundred items and go over a receipt and check out everything to see if it, uh, if the bill was correct. Uh, while, while she checked out this particular bill, she noticed that she was off like two dollars and she, she wanted to take back the stuff and return it or get it straightened out. I forgot exactly what it was. So the next day I said, let's go to uh, Whitefront and uh, take care of it. She said, no, I don't want to go today. I said, come on. I said, oh, you, you, want to, you want to take care of the mistake? Let's go today. And we, we had a brand new car that I got uh, from uh, the General Motors. And well, it was like the, the second day we had it. Finally, I convinced her to go. And we went to, uh, uh, to Whitefront to return the stuff. And while we were there, uh, she was at the register uh, checking it out. And she said there was a mistake. She went to the manager and showed her the, the mistake, and he stopped all the registers and checked it out to see if it was correct. In the meantime, I was over in the television department, and I was looking at the television, and it said the dam broke. And I looked, and I looked down, and I saw I was, I was, I was, I was, I was you know, about a foot of water. The whole place was flooded because the dam was right above uh, the white front store. And it was it was uh, it was a complete disaster. So when I went back, we all of a sudden we couldn't get out of the building because the water was like up to our knees. And uh, I said to June, I said, "Let's go out the back." And we went out. I, I, I said, "We'll swim for her." So we went towards the back of the store. And when we opened up at the door, the cars were floating by. She said, "I'm not going to jump in the water." So we went back and we climbed up a ladder on top of the roof where a bunch of people were. And while we were going up there, they, they were offering us, um, uh, in the meantime, we, while we were in that area, June was going through the trees again. <laughs> so she picked out a bunch of slippers and then we went, went, to, uh, we went up the ladder. And while we were going up the ladder, the, the people in, in, from uh, Whitefront were handing out blankets and said, uh, uh, do you have any kids? And she said, yes. And they gave us some blankets. <laughs> we took them up on the roof. And we were up on the roof for a while. 
Well, the, uh, after a while, the, the water subsided and we were able to uh, come down. We finally went down. We were walking out in the, to the yard where the cars were parked and I, all the cars were gone except ours. When we got it in the car, we tried to start it, but then we could, it wouldn't go. It was full of mud and sand. So we finally had to take a cab back to the house. And that was, uh, that was a story about the flood. It's a real by the way. that I learned about the whole thing was always let my wife make the decisions. <laughs> we never should have gone back to the store, <laughs> especially that day. Anyway, that's a, that, that story. Ten years. Ten years difference between my son. And so she, she was the youngest. And, um, and I sent her to a bunch of private schools because she was such a good student. And one time she came back and said that one of the girls there uh, took her money in a sandwich. And I said, why'd you let her do that? She said, no particular reason. I said, well, next time she uh, tries to uh, uh, take anything from you, you ask her to come outside and uh, get her away from the school. And then when she does it again, you punch her as hard as you can and see what happens. Then she won't bother anymore. So she finally did that and knocked the girls silly. And uh, she never had any more problems with the girls. She'd be a parent so I remember that. <laughs> the driver. Oh, I remember one time she, she took a drive to Palm Springs. And when she came back, uh, she didn't have a door on the car. I said, where's the door? She said it's on the side of the bridge, which she smacked into. Well, I had to get a new car, but she was okay. Going backwards a little bit, uh, when, I, when I was out in uh, California by myself, before I married my wife, uh, a friend of mine, Elliot Kastner, who was a producer, uh, said, let's go to a party tonight. I said, okay, great. So I met a girl, or knew a girl, and took her to the party. It was an A-list party. And while I was there, uh, Bogart came over to me and said, who's the broad? And I said, she's not a broad, she's a lady. And Bogart said, hey, what are you, a wise guy? At that particular time, Sinatra came over and said, what's the problem? And he said, uh, kind of, oh, I told him what was going on. He said, well, get this guy out of here, meaning me. But I didn't go out. I just, uh, a friend of mine came, came over and said he's a friend. I was with him, so they let me stay there. Anyway, it was a great party, and uh, I'll always remember uh, Sinatra and Bogart. <laughs> Approximately 1985. Business was uh, very, very good. And um, one day I was passing a building over on uh, Alameda and 45th Street, and I inquired uh, about the building, and they told me that it was for sale. It was, yeah, it was uh, for rental. Yeah, rent for rent or sale or whatever. Anyway, uh, I inquired about it. It was like a 50,000 square foot building on a big piece of land. Uh, it was empty and all the windows were broken. There must have been like maybe 500 broken windows. But anyway, I, I think I paid a uh, $50,000 uh, down payment and rented it. And for, for the first year, uh, we cleaned it up. Did I, 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 I thought I would put in a, uh, some furniture from uh, Mexico and I put some guy in charge of, of going down there and seeing what he could find. But uh, whatever we, what, we, we, we rented some spaces to some people in Mexico. But finally, we, just, we noticed that we had a, a lot of uh, Koreans bringing in uh, clothing and other items. And uh, it finally ended up where we got rid of all the furniture and only uh, only uh, uh, rented to these Koreans. Filled up the whole building with uh, uh, spaces to rent. We must have had about a couple hundred spaces all rented out and we were doing fantastic. Uh, after a while, we, it became so 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 successful that there are other, some other swap meets started to come up around us, and uh, I, 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 I decided that I wanted to sell the place, and I sold it uh, for a lot of money, and that was a very, very, uh, and the place is still, is still going strong today.
That was my swappy days. Uh, after that, uh, for some stupid reason, I made a couple of movies, which were, were all uh, were, uh, small, small budget movies, which were, uh, were, which were disasters, and it cost me a lot of money. And I was very sorry I did it, but I, like I said, it was a stupid move. In the meantime, I got a divorce from my wife because of it, and uh, for, for about the next 10 years, I was out on my own. We finally got, to, got back together again, and, um, and, and that was uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, when we split up our property, uh, she got the house, which was very, which was terrific, and I got the business, and um, that's where we are today. Along the way, I so far I've ended up with well, let's see, nine grandchildren, and so far two great grandchildren. Fortunately, are fantastic. They are fantastic. Yeah, that's what I can tell you. They are. My, my daughter Michelle is terrific. She comes over every Sunday and makes me breakfast. <laughs> I don't want to make that a small thing. It's a big thing. That's a big thing. And now <laughs> the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friends, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case. For I wish I'm certain I lived a life that's full. I traveled each and every highway and more, much more than that, I did it my way. Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, few too to mention. I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway, and more, much more than that, I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, that I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all, and I stood tall and did it my way. I loved and laughed and cried. I've had my fill and share of losing. I loved, I laughed and cried. I've had my fill and share of losing. And now, as the tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, not me. I did it my way. For what is a man? What has he got? If not himself, then he has not. To say the words he truly feels, and not the words of one who kneels. I faced it all, and I stood tall, and did it my way.